they're devastating, sophisticated and all too believable. A new wave of scams is sweeping the country, trapping unsuspecting victims and wiping billions from bank accounts. Tonight, how to make sure you and your family don't get caught out. Well, it shattered my life. Every day. He was calling me every single day. Even when the computer's off now, I still don't feel safe. We definitely see cryptocurrency as an enabler of cybercrime. Here at A Current Affair, we receive many emails from victims of scammers, but in recent months, we've noticed a new phenomenon. Hundreds of Aussies writing in to us for help after being scammed using cryptocurrency. My name is Philip Savage. I have lost $350,000. My name's Ian. I lost $12,000. So in just under about three months, I lost about just under $350,000. These three people are probably not your typical cryptocurrency investors, but how they were tricked is something we should all listen to. Originally, they contacted me by telephone after I had browsed an internet site. 69-year-old grandfather Philip Savage was already battling a range of serious health issues, including liver cancer and missing a lung. But it was clicking on an ad on Facebook, supposedly from a celebrity endorsing cryptocurrency, that really shattered his life. They were bringing up ideas and money numbers, which mesmerised me. And I thought, well, these guys sound pretty good. He started out sending a small amount, but became more confident after being shown fake returns by the scammers, eventually transferring $350,000. What impact has it had on you to lose that much money? Well, it shattered my life. It was money that I had set aside for my grandchildren. Hello. Lachin Jacob runs a Sydney construction business and didn't know much about the world of crypto until he received a call from someone claiming to be from his bank. How I trust him is because he's explained exactly, he's know everything about my account. He know my name, he know my business name, he know exactly all the transaction lasts two years. His first transfer was $5,000, but once shown some fake returns, he continued sending more money. As soon as he got my trust, 10,000, 14,000, 10, 22, 15, 20, the final damage bill, $333,000. He says ANZ Bank has offered him little assistance and his family home at South Wentworthville is now on the line with potential bankruptcy looming. I feel very bad. I feel my business is going to go very bad because this is very, very big money to my business. And I have to, look, I have to do something about this. An ad on Instagram came up. So I went, oh yeah, why not, I'll just, get, I'll just have a look at this. Ian Pothicary is an excavator driver from Melbourne whose interest was aroused after some mates made big bucks from Bitcoin. One click on the ad resulted in hundreds of phone calls from scammers pretending to be a crypto investment company. Have you got any desk? I said, well, no, what, what's that? He said, oh, it's just something that, so we can get your account set up. AnyDesk is a remote access program which scammers can use to take control of your computer. Ian transferred $1,500 when right in front of his eyes, the scammers started taking more. Then it, was, it just went berserk. It went $1,500, $2,000, blah, blah, blah. It kept going and I pulled the computer. I pulled the plugs out of the computer, turned the computer off. His decision to pull those plugs saved him, but not before losing $12,000, and he's worried about what else may come. They know where I live, they know my name, phone number. You know, <laughs> it's a bit scary. Before cryptocurrency arrived, scammers used money transfer companies like Western Union, which quickly became a red flag for potential scams. Now they do it faster and more efficiently using cryptocurrency, making the victim think it's an investment 
as they willingly send their hard-earned cash into the digital world, never to be seen again. It doesn't physically exist. It's, it's, you can't see it. It's probably the easiest thing for a scammer to take. We certainly see cryptocurrency um, as an emerging threat. Chris Goldsmith is the Acting Assistant Commissioner for the AFP's Cyber Command. It looks like we've been able to trace that cryptocurrency transaction back to the target device. The AFP dealt with 67,000 cybercrime reports last year and cryptocurrency is quickly becoming a valuable tool for criminals. We see it as a laundering mechanism where the criminals will um, uh, steal money and then move it into cryptocurrency to uh, facilitate the laundering process. Once your money is transferred, there's often very little that can be done to recover it. What I would encourage the public to do is to be vigilant and do their due diligence around um, things like exchanges that they're using. Philip Savage's daughter Maddie wishes his bank did more to try and stop her ailing father from sending so much money, especially as he's been scammed before. Maybe some more probing questions or some greater protocols around such a high amount of money being moved into something that is crypto. The banks have to protect ours money. Still, they don't do nothing about it. Both ANZ and Commonwealth Bank say they have measures in place to help protect customers. You can read their full statements on our website. And if you think you've been scammed, contact your bank immediately.